Hey, what's up everyone? John of the Geek here, and this is the Chrome Pixel. Now, you're probably asking yourself, why on earth am I taking this apart and showing you the inside of this really expensive $1,300 piece of machinery? Well, there's a lot of great videos out there of reviews showing you the outside and how uh, the operating system works and all its features, and I'll probably come out with a video like that as well, uh, something proper later on. Uh, but I just wanted to show you uh, what the insides look like here and maybe even possibly do a, a small upgrade, right? And so for those inquiring minds that want to know how this came apart, on the four corners here, uh, there are these little rubber feet. And underneath the rubber feet are these tiny little screws. And that's pretty much it. The rubber feet is held in by some uh, sticky tape there. And uh, taking this apart was very difficult. Uh, sorry I don't have a video showing you how to take it apart, but it was very difficult and I needed my concentration on how to take this apart. And essentially, what's on the other side of this are these little latches here. This is what makes it very difficult to take apart because you can't exactly just pull this straight out. These little hooks uh, are latched on to the case here, onto the chassis. And so the best way to go about it really is that after you pry this apart, there's a little bit of glue on the edges here, on the top and the bottom edges. There's a little bit of glue on there, and when you pry it apart with a plastic spudger, always use a plastic spudger for this type of thing. You don't want to scar it. Um, the best method I went with going about this was using a uh, suction cup like this. And so once I pulled, it would flex the aluminum right inward, and then when it would flex, it would uh, undo the little uh, latch on here, on this little hook right here, right? So it would flex a little bit and then it was able to pop out and this was able to come out uh, easily with this little suction cup dealy here, right? So moving on to the actual components here. We have the batteries, pretty uh, noticeable. And uh, as many batteries as there are, this gets a pretty mediocre four to five hours of uh, runtime. But then again, it does have a high resolution screen and it's got a lot of processing um, to do for that high resolution um, screen. And it's a touch screen as well. So that's probably why this eats up a lot of batteries. Moving on to the sides here, we have a couple of speakers that project sounds through the keyboard. And uh, I have heard this play sound. It does play it pretty loud, although a little bit tinny, but then again, they are tiny little laptop speakers here. Right, and uh, on this left side here, we have a couple of USB ports, the display port out, and the power cord, uh, power adapter port there. And then um, on the side here, we have, I'm guessing this is a keyboard cable, right? And then uh, this little chip right here looks to be like the SSD, the 32 gigs, possibly. I could be wrong, right? And then uh, we have a chipset right here. There's no heat sink on it. And so uh, we have the Core i5 CPU underneath this heat sink here with this heat pipe going to the fan assembly. And then this looks like to be the RAM that's built in. Looks like to be uh, integrated right into the motherboard there. It comes with 4 gigs of RAM, so I'm guessing that's 2 and 2. And uh, this is the Wi-Fi chip, the Wi-Fi radio there. And so this right here, this cable, I'm guessing that it could be uh, the camera because this is J-cam right on the side there. Could be the camera, I'm not sure. And then we have um, the SD card reader right on the side here, which is pretty nice. And then uh, last but not least, two very interesting connections, devices, uh, gadgets going on here. This is, seems to be some cable, uh, data port that you can hook a cable to, very much like uh, this cable right here. So uh, once you pull these two tabs out, you could plug in a cable, and I'm guessing that's either for diagnostic purposes or programming pur purposes, because see, there's no, as you can see, there's no cable in there right now, but if I pull this little piece of plastic out, it'll expose the port for you to plug in a cable. Oh, and by the way, this right here, most likely the power, ATX style, or tiny, tiny laptop ATX style from the batteries, uh, or whatever power supply that's underneath this little plastic piece. Um, that looks like to be the uh, what's powering the board, right? And uh, last but not least, this little 
area right here where there's a PCI Express slot and there seems to be a blank card which I am going to take apart right now and so I'm guessing that uh, one could add additional storage because this is in the same shape and form oops whoa that was not supposed to happen this is in the same shape and form of a mSATA chip just like this one right so there's a blank PCB kind of chip going on here and so I have a, a 30 gig OCZ Noctua chip that I bought a long time ago uh, they do they have been starting to come out with larger capacities with uh, I believe a hundred or up to 240 maybe even 512 I think I've seen them um, I looked online just recently and I could have sworn I saw one for uh, 120 gigs for about $107 which isn't bad and so uh, I'm gonna have to uh, format this MSATA SSD because I think I used it for some SSD caching on another motherboard and this the format I'm, I'm almost certain it's not going to be read by the Chrome OS so I'm probably gonna have to take this apart again and take it out and uh, plug it into a computer format it properly so I can plug this in so I'm hoping that I can uh, install Linux somewhere on there or even somehow get Windows on there I know I failed in my other video talking about trying to install Linux on the or Windows on the uh, Acer C7 Chromebook but I'm gonna try some new techniques possibly I'll be able to uh, get it on this SATA port here and so uh, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, I'm not gonna get um, more into it I'm not gonna break it down even more uh, because I don't want to break anything I may have to return this thing so um, that's pretty much all that I'm going to show you in terms of the insides here. Hope you enjoyed that. Hopefully it was somewhat informative. Uh, be sure to subscribe, rate, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever, all that jazz. Uh, because I'm going to be doing uh, more videos showing you some of the software and some of the capabilities of this. And answering a lot of questions that I got about the Acer C7 Chromebook and the software and the Chrome OS of what you could do. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Hey, what's up everyone? John of the Geek here, and this is the 